What up fellow nerds, Martina here, and today I'm making a drink dispenser. I've seen a ton of cardboard dispensers out there, and I felt inspired to make one of my own just from a bit more durable materials. So let's get started. As usual, I started a new project with some sketches, trying to make a plan of all the components I need and which materials I should use for all of them. I also find it useful to draw a schematic beforehand, as well as taking the right measurements. The original plan was to be able to connect a 1.5 liter bottle to the pump directly, but I'll show you why I didn't do that later. The first step I did was create the entire box out of 1 cm thick plywood. I haven't worked with this type of wood before, but I really liked it, as it's easy to cut and quite sturdy. I dealt with the side pieces first, just clamped them together and used a hand planer and a file to make them match perfectly. I prepared the other plywood pieces as well. With some tape I could keep the side pieces attached to the back while attaching the front pieces. I'm not gonna attach the back piece as this will be used as a swing door to access the drink containers. I secured all the pieces with wood glue and nails. The back door will be kept in place by two hinges. On the other side I simply used two hook and eye latches. I used two to make it more rigid and because the wood was slightly warped which fixed the problem. Now that the main shape was finished I could cover it all up with this beautiful veneer. It's incredibly thin, so thin that I could cut it with a scissor. It was no issue attaching it, I just used contact glue, which you have to apply to both the pieces you're gluing, and let it dry for 10 minutes before merging them. It made it much easier to flatten it out when I used a plastic squeegee, so I'd really recommend using one. I wanted to create a water drain, so in addition to having a plastic box that would collect all the spillage underneath the tubes, I wanted to cover that box up with this aluminum mesh. I marked the size of it and tried to use cutter pliers at first, but that would take a lot of time. It's not impossible by any means, it's just a bit of work, so I decided to use a rotary tool instead. I hadn't decided whether I wanted to use wood as the floor or a piece of aluminum, but I finally went for plywood. Again, wood glue and nails. I ordered this thin aluminum roll ages ago, and I hadn't used it yet, so this was a perfect opportunity to test it out. It was thin enough to be cut by scissors too, which made it easy to cut and shape like I wanted. Contact glue worked here too, again using the plastic squeegee to flatten it out. I noticed that the aluminum mesh bent slightly, and to fix that I added an aluminum angle underneath the inner edge to give it some support. It was easily cut with a hacksaw. Now let's move on to the plastic water collector. As the front of it I used a white opaque acrylic which I cut with a scroll saw. You can also use a scoring knife to make straight cuts like this. There's not really a need for a fancy saw. After cleaning it up a bit, I drilled two holes so I could fasten the aluminum handle to it. For the rest of the box I used regular acrylic and sealed it with hot glue. I think silicon could be a better option to seal it with, but I haven't experienced any leakage with the hot glue alone, so I'm not worried about spillage. I used the remaining scraps of the aluminum rolls as decoration on the sides. Because I want to be able to switch out the liquids for parties and everyday use, I have to change the labels every now and then, and these label holders will do the trick. I found some perfect aluminum angles that will be able to fit the acrylic front piece as well as give some space for whatever label I want to put inside. Because it's convenient and because I own one, I'll use a metal cutting bandsaw for the next part, but it's also possible to do it with a hacksaw. By cutting 45 degree angles, I could make some pretty good looking squares that I could fit around some acrylic. They just had to be cleaned up a bit with a file first. Mm -hmm. 
regular super glue was enough to fix the aluminum to the acrylic. Before gluing anything on, I applied some finishing oil to the wood and that looks awesome. Next I'll cut some aluminum angles that I could add to the design, just for aesthetical reasons. Again, making 45 degree angles wherever needed and cleaning it up with filing. I tried to be as accurate as possible when adding those label holders, marking just the right distance between them and between the top and the bottom, else it won't look very nice in the end. I could have gone with a simple button as the trigger mechanism to make the liquid pour, but I really wanted to just be able to push a glass onto it and trigger it that way. I still had some scrap opaque acrylic I could use, and I cut four narrow rectangles with the scroll saw. In case I had to adjust the position of it later, I drilled a hole at the top so I could insert an elastic that could pull it backwards. It'll be more clear later. Marking the same height on all of them, I could glue a short metal tube to each one, and this will help keeping them in position. It might have been smarter to drill these holes before building it, but at the same time it might not have been positioned as well as they are now. There are four holes for the plastic tubes that the liquids will flow through, and four holes for the acrylic hands that will be pushed in. While I was at it, I drilled a hole for the power plug too. Time to deal with the electronics. I made a few adjustments from my original sketch, but here's a final schematic. I'll put a link to it in the description if you want to get a better look at it. The reason why I chose to use these pumps instead of a vacuum pump is that they're cheaper and the liquid flow is a lot faster. For my use and design, they're perfect. They will be connected directly to four LED strips of different colors, and the LED strips will in turn be connected to the momentary switch button and the power supply. That way the LEDs and the pump will only be turned on when the button is being pushed in, and that's what the acrylic hands are for. They'll be held in place by some small plywood squares. First, I glued the switch button to one of the plywood bits. Then I connected a short wire to the normally open pin and protected it with shrink tube. I'll need the lids of my plastic containers for the next part. The containers I found were perfect. Four of them fit snugly beside each other inside the dispenser and they're made of hard plastic. Each one can hold a bit more than 1.5 liters. And the main reason I chose not to use plastic bottles is that with these I'm able to put ice cubes inside it. A small detail, but an important one to me at least. I needed to drill two holes in the lid. One smaller to fit the cables for the pump and one larger for the plastic tube. I thread the wires through the hole, and now I can finally connect the rest of the electronics. As I said, I'm soldering the pump directly to the LED strip and onto the switch button. This is what it should look like when it's done. Let's take it step by step. Just gonna push the tube through the plywood and the plastic lid. Okay, so this is the wire from the power cable, and that has to be hooked up with the common ground on the LED strip and the positive wire on the switch button. It's easy to see on the schematic, not too easy to record everything inside that box. Now comes the tricky part, which is to position the acrylic hands correctly. I fit it inside the hole and adjusted the plywood bits back and forth until the push on the button felt nice, and then glued them on with hot glue. Finally, I could glue the LED strip around the tube. Only two more now. This is what it looks like on the inside after cleaning everything up. I had to use elastics on two of the hands, so good thing that I added those holes. Now, all that's left is to fill those containers and test it out. It's quite easy to slip the pump in there and the lid is very well sealed. And if I put some soda in there, I can just use the label from the bottle to mark the right tube.
The pumps removes a lot of carbonation from the sodas because the liquid has to pass through the motor, but it doesn't really matter to me as I'll use it mostly for non-carbonated drinks. But if you're more of a soda drinker, a vacuum pump might be a better option for you. I think it's really practical too, because it's easy to change out the liquids and wash the containers therein. All the music in this video was provided by Epidemic Sound. We recently switched libraries to this one and I really enjoy it. I think it stands out from a lot of other music libraries because it has such a modern music and it has a wide range of genres and effects. So if you're a content creator, make sure to check it out and click the link below and you'll get a 30 day free trial. I hope you enjoyed this build and if you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can stay updated on our future projects. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.